This is your friendly scripter, Fred Allendale, here today to present the first in a series of introductory tutorials for the VRDZ Event Staffing Board. Uh, this is a staffing board that will allow venue owners or operators to um, schedule and staff and actually even automatically pay staff members for working various events. It's quite a comprehensive product and there's a lot of aspects to it so I'll probably be doing several uh, tutorials. Uh, this, this will be the first one in the series and uh, basically uh, just to get you started uh, you res up the event staffing board and uh, there is a uh, configuration note card in the uh, board itself uh, that lets you set up a lot of interesting and different parameters depending on how you want to operate the system. Uh, for now, to get started, uh, you can use the default parameters that are already there and we'll have another tutorial where I'll go through each of the parameters and explain what they do and why you might or might not want to use a particular one. So to start with, uh, we're just going to enter a, a random event you click on any empty uh, event name line and a box will show up here and right now uh, the only option is the enter the event name uh, also you'll notice every pop-up box will have these in the last row a back button to go to the previous menu a help button to get a, a help note card with a lot of details and a done button to close the uh, the box um, it's advised to use the done button instead of the ignore button to close the box because the box gets locked to a particular, uh, the board gets locked to a particular uh, user um, while the menus are open. And um, if they're not closed properly, uh, it will take some time before that times out and somebody else can use the board. So. Just recommend using the done button uh, whenever you're done with a particular menu. So let's enter an event name. Uh, we'll start off with a simple event. We'll say uh, uh, concert in the park, maybe. I'm just kind of making these up right now. Uh, the information about that event shows up down here. Some default things are filled in, uh, but you'll be able to change those later. Uh, and the name of the event shows up here, as well as the date and time, which you have not put in yet. Um, so let's say I want to put in a second event, uh, and we'll call this one uh, maybe a guest speaker. Again, these can be any, any names for your events that you want. Okay, now let's go back and uh, modify these events to put in the more details that we want. So I can click on this line here and now it will bring up a window that lets you do a number of different things. Uh, show event simply brings up this again this data here in the in the in the window your local chat window these are all in private chat uh, I'll set this up so it's a little bit easier to read um, but it will show you the event ID which is assigned automatically by the system um, when the event starts what the name of the event is how long it is the uh, a, a slurl link to the actual event location. The default right now just set just defaults to the location of the staffing board, but you're going to change that later by the menu. Uh, if you want the event to repeat, you can set a number of repeat days so that once an event completes, for example, if you set that to seven, it'll be a weekly event that'll be uh, held at the same time uh, each uh, each week. Uh, and then uh, there'll be a, uh, a list of staff members assigned to the event. Uh, there are s staff roles like manager, DJ, dancer, whatever. 
uh, how many of those are required, what the payment would be for that event, and uh, who's signed up for that uh, event. And we'll get into that later. But those are all the fields that are stored in the internal event list uh, that you'll enter. So uh, let's say I want to change something in the concert in the park. So we will uh, go to edit event. I can also delete the event. Um, this send request button uh, sends a staffing request IM to all staff members for all open positions for this event. Um, so you can send a query out to everybody in your staff list to let them know that there's an event that needs staffing. And uh, also there's a, uh, an automatic once a day um, send out for all events that have open staff positions. Uh, it sends IMs to everybody in your staff list. So it really uh, notifies everybody that there's some staffing that uh, is available. Okay, so let's go to edit the event, uh, and uh, we can we can start with the uh, the start time of the event, and this is entered in a year, month, day format. So let's say it's 2021. Let's make it a little further out in the future. Uh, 06, um, 02 uh, for the uh, date. And then you, you put in a, a space. And then you enter the time in uh, Second Lifetime. And let's say it's at uh, 1630. So that would be 430 PM. So it's in 24 hour time in Second Lifetime. Okay, and you will see the, the dates updated now here in the date and time for that area. Uh, this list will also automatically sort in um, the ascending order by date and time. So if I enter something for the guest speaker here, let's say I want to want to click on this field, edit the event, and show the start time of that. And let's say this one actually starts later. So if I go 20... 210605 uh, at uh, say1900 and I submit that. Now it actually will resort the list so it shows up again in in chronological order. Okay. So let's say, uh, now I'm working with the guest speaker here. It'll show on top, that's the event. And that was the, I can enter the length of time. Now all of them default to 60 minutes, but uh, if you want to have it some other duration, let's say this one's only 30 minutes, I can, I can set that up too. So now you can see it posted a new date here at 30 minutes. Um, Now I can enter the, the region name. And again, uh, it'll default to the event staffing board region. So I'm just going to leave that alone. I'll, and then I'll enter the coordinates. And the coordinates are in the form of the X, Y, and Z region coordinates. So let's say, uh, 200, um, 120, uh, 105. And this could be anywhere in the in the in that region. So now the new coordinates show up here in the list. So we're gradually filling this out. Uh, and let's say we want to repeat this one every week. So we'll enter seven for the repeat days. So it shows up down here as seven for the repeat days. Now we'll also then can enter staff information. So let's say uh, enter roles first of all. So I want to add a role or select a role to edit. So let's say I want to add a role and here's my options. 
There are predefined role names, and they all come from the uh, configuration note card. So the defaults are dancer, escort, manager, host, and DJ, but you can add or change those by just changing them on the configuration note card. So let's say I need a manager. So I'll click on manager, and now manager shows up, but I haven't entered the required number or the pay yet. So let's, uh, and we have a manager, we have the manager now shows up in this list. So now I can either add another role or I can go and add more details about the requirements for that role. For example, their, their pay and how many I need. So let me go ahead and just add another role. Uh, you notice the manager now is gone from this because that role's already been added. Uh, but I, let's say I want a DJ there as well. So now I've got a manager and a DJ. So when that shows up down here, it shows up as having both. And now let's uh, go and fill out some more information since maybe that's all the staffing I need. So manager, um, I can uh, either add staff or delete staff, but I, I don't want to do that yet uh, to that manager role because normally the staff themselves will sign up for that, but the, the owner or the admins can also do that. Um, so we'll uh, say, let's say, edit this role. And now, so the event we're working with is the guest speaker. We want to enter the number of managers required and the pay amount as two numbers in a, in a, in a list with a comma in between. So for example, in this case, I want one manager and maybe they'll get paid uh, 500 lindens. Uh, for this role, so we'll submit that. Okay, and you can see now that the manager is filled out. This this uh, event needs one manager, and they get paid 500 lindens. And then uh, let's go back, and we'll now fill out the DJ. And let's say, just for sake of argument, um, that I want to have um, two DJs and they get paid 300 lindens each. I don't, I'm just making these numbers up. I you set these however you want. Okay, so now we've got, we've got this all set up. Uh, most of the information for that particular event um, is now set, except for the actual staff people um, that we're gonna staff that with. Now you notice the, uh, these items are still in red on here. That means there's no staff signed up for those yet. Um, the, they will turn yellow if they're partially staffed, and they will turn green once they're fully staffed. But before people can sign up uh, to staff events, um, they need to be added to your staff list. This provides you control of uh, the list of people who are allowed to sign up and what roles they're allowed to sign up for. So let's add a couple of staff people. Um, so we'll again um, p click anywhere on the board other than in one of these squares to bring up the general menu here. And let's say we want to go and edit the staff list. So on the staff list, we can enter a select staff name to enter a new person. Uh, and so let's say staff name, and we'll enter one of my alts, Freddie Furlow. We'll submit that. And then we need to add a list of roles that Freddie is allowed to have. So let's say uh, we'll let him be the manager. Uh, and then we can let him also be a host. So you can see here now the data is in the list for any manager or host or his allowed roles. And this opt-in is whether or not uh, they will get uh, notifications 
of uh, available positions or not. So it defaults to opt in, but they can later select opt out and they won't get the notification IMs of positions that are open. Okay, so now we're done with, with Freddie. Uh, and let's uh, add another staff member. Let's go to this again, go to the staff list. And uh, we'll put in Curiosite. And let's say we'll assign her as a DJ and a dancer. I'm sure she'll appreciate that. And roll DJ and dancer. You notice when you go to add a roll, any of the roles that have already been added are no longer in the menu, so you can't add a duplicate roll. Okay. And if you're ever curious about who you may have on your staff list, uh, you can click on this export here and it will show the staff list here in this window. Shows the date that it was exported and Freddie Furlow. One is the opt-in, opt-out flag, so that means he's opted in for messages and he's qualified as a manager and a host. And Curiosite is a DJ and dancer. Uh, this export and import can also be used as backup and restore, and I'll explain some of those formats uh, later. Or you can add staff members or events uh, through the import function as well. And there'll be a separate tutorial uh, on the formats for those cards. But right now, we're just going to work with the uh, the menu system. So now I've brought on my trusty assistant, Freddie. Uh, over here, who will uh, sign up for one of these uh, as a staff for one for the guest speaker event? Uh, now, I'll, as a reminder, here is the information that we've entered through our event menu, and this requires uh, one manager and two DJs. Uh, so, I will now switch over to Freddie's window. Okay, now I'm in Freddie's window, and say he wants to sign up uh, for the guest speaker event. So I'll click on that line, and you'll see it'll show him what in, in the chat nearby chat window here, all the information about that event. And it looks like it requires one manager that pays 500 linens and two DJs that pay 300 linens. Uh, these are the numbers that we just input a little while ago. All right, so I get a window that defines what all you can do. I can sign up. I can uh, withdraw if I've already signed up. Uh, I can do the opt-in or opt-out, which basically says I can opt in to getting a daily uh, list of IMs about open staff positions. And... If I'm not qualified for this event or um, I'm not in the list at all, I'll get this. I can have this apply button down here, which will just give me a form in a note card to apply for uh, an additional position or a new position. So let's say I want to go ahead and sign up for this. The event is guest speaker. So I'll say I'll sign up. And it gives me my choice because there's a manager and a DJ of uh, which one I want to sign up for. Uh, so let's say I decide I want to try and sign up for the DJ. Well, I'm not qualified to be a DJ. So if you look in this box in the left down in the chat, it says error, sorry, you're not qualified or already signed up for the role of DJ. Uh, so uh, I have to make another choice. Let me try sign up again. This time I'll try and sign up as a manager. Okay, and that works out okay. Um, so I can sign up as a manager and you can see I've been added in this lower left-hand box again 
Uh, the record's been updated and it shows Freddie Furlow signed up as the manager. Uh, and he will now get uh, uh, reminder IMs uh, about 15 minutes or whatever number you specify before the start of the event and will also be qualified to get paid uh, for the event. You'll also notice up here on the second line of the staffing board for the uh, guest speaker event, it's now turned yellow because this is the first staff member I've added, so it's partially staffed. There's still two open positions for DJs, however. So we're pretty well done with, with Freddie at this point. Uh, so we'll go back to uh, my, uh, my regular window. Okay, then we'll also see if we can fully staff this. Uh, the other way of adding staff is the uh, owner or the administrator can do it uh, via the, the menu system uh, in case the actual person can't be there but does want to be signed up. So you have the ability to actually sign people up for events uh, if, you, if you need that. So again, we'll uh, edit, we'll uh, edit the event uh, and uh, we want to go to the roles menu and we want to go to the DJ because nobody signed up for that yet so for the DJ role uh, we will sign up to add staff and we have to type in the name of the staff member we want to add. Oh, I might have made it. I might have made a typo. Let's see. Let's try that again. Yeah, I did type. I think I did type it wrong. Okay. So there we have uh, added Curiosite as the, uh, the DJ for that role. Uh, it's still yellow because we have a uh, requirement for two DJs. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sign myself up as, as that role. All right, so we'll say Fred Allendale. Now you'll see also here it says Fred Allendale's not a valid name or not in the staff list because you can't sign somebody up if they're not in the staff list. So we'll close this menu, click on the boarded background somewhere, go to the staff list, and I will add myself. As Fred Allendale and then I will add a role to myself and I since what I need here is another DJ so I'll add myself as a DJ okay now I should be able to go again to the event edit the event click on roles and I'll select the DJ to enter and I'll add staff to that and it'll be Fred Allendale and now you'll see down here that I've been added in the lower left box here now for the event record this event's now fully staffed. I have one manager, which is Freddie, and two DJs, Curiosite and myself, Fred. And you'll see also now that it's fully staffed, it's turned green. And the this particular event now, when the daily instant messages go out soliciting people for available staff positions, uh, this event won't go out because there are no open staff positions at this point. So that concludes this tutorial, which covers the basic use of the staffing board. And we covered how to uh, enter event information, 
how to enter the event staffing requirements, basically the, the types of staff members and how many of them you need and how much the pay is. And then we've also covered how to sign people up for uh, staffing that event, as well as how to enter your staff members into the master staff list. Uh, so we will have several more tutorials in this series that cover the configuration note card options uh, and a, uh, a remote staff HUD, which is, makes it easier because the staff member doesn't have to visit the board to sign up for an event. They can sign up remotely. And we'll also go over some of the other features, uh, such as automatic payment uh, and automatic uh, reminder IMs, as well as staff positions available IMs. Again, this is Fred Allendale covering the VRDZ Event Staffing Board. Thank you.